Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with another beginner's guide today and it is the Aztecs. Now we've had some sort of rumors on the grapevine that there are going to be some changes potentially to the Aztecs in the near future. So what better time to get used to them right now, get on the ladder, get playing them because they are super, super fun. If you love aggression, if you love age two stuff, this is the sieve for you. So let's jump into it. Of course, the first sort of step is going through the unique units, features and buildings of the sieve. And then we'll be moving on to the deck and the deck that I'm going to be using, the 1v1 land deck mainly. I will be showing you the team one that I use as well. And then finally, I'll be sort of just casting a recent game that I played actually yesterday that I played, which went really well. And it just really demonstrates the sort of opening and sort of build that I go for for Aztec at the moment. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's get into the features. So the Warrior Priest can work at the Community Plaza and are counted as two units. So once again, the Community Plaza used to be called the Fire Pit. It's a big thing with all native sieves and you can switch and you can generate XP, for example. You can have a fertility dance that can increase the training rate of any units. You can have the war dance, for example, which can increase the attack multiplies, the attack percentage of all of your units. And it all depends on how many warrior priests or villagers you have tasked to it. The war chief, which is your explorer. The aura doubles the experience from nearby friendly units kills. This is super, super crucial. Now, especially when you're at the start of the game, when you're going out to your hunts and everything, sorry, your treasures, you want to make sure that your Eagle Runner Knight or any sort of unit that you have or Eagle Scout, sorry, takes the final kill. Make sure that the War Chief doesn't take the final hit because you want to get as much XP as possible. Starts with a warrior priest and all trading post sites are visible, which is really, really awesome. That's really handy. The community plaza, you can build the community plaza, of course. Yep. Uh, we choose tribal council members to advance in age, which are the same as your politicians. They're just called tribal council members. And that's the features. Moving on to the unique units, the Aztec war chief, of course, just mentioned, provides that XP, can build TCs and trading posts. The Eagle Scout, that's a unit that you start off with at the start with your Aztec War Chief, and you can generate more Eagle Scouts by training them with your War Chief. I tend to train a second one right at the start of the game so I can help use them to explore the map and defeat Treasure Guardians. The Villager is a Villager. The Warrior is a quick native defender that you can spawn from your community plaza if you change the dance. The Warrior Priest, of course, can heal injured units and are also effective in combat. I tend to just mainly use them just to dance at the, it says dance at the fire pit, but it's been changed. It's called the Community Plaza now. Coyote Runner is your cavalry unit. You don't actually have proper cav units like a horse and person, horse and horse rider. You just have infantry units. However, the Coyote Runner is your cavalry units just treat it as a sort of a heavy cav unit they are good against skirmishes and artillery and very fast the otontin the otontin slinger also called as just a slinger is your skirmish unit good against heavy infantry very high fire rate puma spearmen are good against cav and very high siege damage so really really good at taking down early buildings in the game the arrow knights is your sort of artillery unit your siege unit good against artillery and buildings okay unit uh, can only make them in age three the eagle runner knights this is a staple unit if you are playing beyond age two they are essentially your anti-cav unit so they have a high um, resistance to range uh, good at cavalry and coyote runners as you can see there but they are also a very good all-round unit they they are actually good against just general infantry as well a very very good unit jaguar prowl knight Stealthy, noble armed with an obsidian sword. It's kind of crazy. They are good against cavalry and heavy infantry. The Skull Knight, you see lots of builds for like a sort of a Skull Knight, early age two sort of rush. They are just an elite berserker, super heavy infantry, really good at siege damage. And I believe they do AOE damage, but don't quote me on that. I think they do. They have an ability that can do AOE damage. A couple of uh, ships here. We've got the Canoe native boat that can attack and transport units a war canoe and a uh talok canoe interesting okay 
Unique buildings, finally then the farm, which is just gives you the food income. The community plaza, which I've already mentioned, the war hut, which is your barracks essentially, and it can also defend itself so it can fire ranged attacks. It's got ranged attack there. And the nobles hut, which is your age three sort of advanced barracks, you could say, um, that trains your elite Aztec units. And also, I believe it also actually fires as well. So it actually does have uh, attack damage. And you've got some unique ceremonies there that you can use on your community plaza. And that's pretty much it, guys, for the unique units, features, and buildings. We're going to jump straight into a deck now, ideally looking at the 1v1 land deck for you. And I will show you uh, some team decks as well. Let's get into it. Okay, guys, you join me on the deck overview. So this is the 1v1 land deck that I'm going to be showing you today. And I'm just going to rattle through a few of these. But to be honest, the majority of the time, we're going to be focusing on the age one and age two cards. Age three, not so much because the type of opening we're going to be doing, we're going to be focusing on trying to shut down our opponent in age two and securing the win. So that is the, that's the thing. Music. The music is by Harris Heller. Harris Heller stream uh, royalty free music. So we're okay on YouTube here. So the first thing you want to go for is the three villagers. That's the first card you sort of want to pick up. And next time, next card, sorry, you kind of want to go for the uh, nine o Otantin Slingers and then move into 700 wood. And obviously the reason that I'll sort of go through this is when I cast the replay, but you kind of want to have a lot of infantry units and your special card here, which I've sort of showcased in a previous video on my channel, is the 11 Mayan Allies, which gives you 11 spearmen that are really good at cavalry and really good at buildings. And we are going to be macroing so we can get that card as soon as possible in H2. So that is the plan. So that is a really crucial card to have. I would say, honestly, you can't really switch a lot of these cards out. You potentially could switch out one of the cards here. Uh, maybe take out the 600 wood for five villagers potentially. I would suggest just keeping this just as it is. Age three, uh, you kind of want to focus on your military upgrades and your Eagle Runner Knights. They're a very good unit. And I've got each of these here. So these are sort of extra um, cards that you have to spend uh, gold on, 500 gold. And they give you a unit shipment and a permanent bonus and buff to that infantry unit. So that the Slinger here gets an HP bonus of 25%, which is insane, and a range attack and line of sight increase, for example, only for 500 gold, which is really crazy. So sometimes the strategy can be is using these chests of coin, for example, the, these infinite chests of coin to help you get these awesome upgrade cards. And that's just an idea of what you can do beyond age two. So that's the 1v1 land deck. That's what we're going to be doing the most time of. There is a water deck that I've got here. So sort of very similar, but we do have like just a, a water card and we have the water ceremony. But overall, not much change from the deck that we're showing here. And then there's a team land deck here. So looking more at the uh, resource gathering cards because you're anticipating that team games are going to be a lot longer than 1v1 games. So more of a focus on upgrading your resource collection rates. And you can see a fishing one here, which has lots of schooners and fish market. And you can see it's a lot more centered around there. So there we go, guys. That is the deck overview. And we're going to jump now finally into a casting of myself playing against an opponent, a Spanish opponent a couple of days ago with the opening build that I want to show you guys. So let's get into it. Right, guys, you join me on the casted game now that I'm going to be showing you the opening build as the Aztec. And this is for, of course, beginner players, also intermediate players as well. If you've never played Aztec before, then keep a keen eye on this and hopefully I can help you win some games and crush some enemies and playing a really unusual sieve that you don't really see that much in the game. So when you sort of start off, you kind of want to just gather all your crates up, very standard. You want to be using your Explorer here to gather your nearest resources. And the first thing you want to start building is you want to start building a community plaza and a house the minute you have enough wood. And that's exactly what you see here, going out and building that. And the next thing is you sort of want to have two to three villagers chopping wood. And you want the rest hunting the 
herdables right here, as you can see. So I've got two on wood. I've got one building a house. And actually, I've, I've completely forgotten already, you have to build a market as well. So that's a community plaza, a house, and a market. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to leave you with 50 gold right here. And you're going to want to chop until you have 50 wood. And you want to be getting hunting dogs. So this is a little bit of an investment in the food gathering or food collection rate. We want to make sure that we... We increase that gathering rate as early as possible so that it helps us. You can see that my explorer has gone ahead and converted a bandit gunslinger. It's really good for native explorers. Have that ability to convert, so always keep an eye out on that. What you can do is completely optional. You can train a second Eagle Scout to help you get even more treasures, but I believe this game I decided not to, so that's completely optional. We are playing a Spanish opponent here, uh, Berlet. Berlatex, Berlatex, that's exactly who we're playing. And this is on the 1v1 ranked ladder. And you can see here now, I am getting the hunting dogs. That's 50 wood and 50 coin. And he's asking, is it the real Widgey? Of course it is, Berlatex, of course it is. And you can see my first card coming in is the three villagers. Now, what you want to do, I'm just going to quickly pause. What you want to do with a community plaza, the minute you've built it, your villager is automatically going to sit on that community plaza. So you want to get that villager off and onto resources. And you want to make sure that you task your warrior priest to the community plaza. And you want to make sure that you switch it to the experience uh, ceremony. The experience ceremony or dance, whatever you want to call it. To so give you that one experience point trickle per second. So now I'm talking quite a lot there, but please feel free to pause the video. Obviously, people in stream right now, it's going to be difficult for you guys to do that. But hopefully you can take something away from this and you can... Uh, he's saying that he's dead. Hopefully you can take something away from this, guys, and give them a go. Because there, there might be a few changes for Aztec in the near future. So, you know, if you're learning Aztec now, you're going to be in a good position if there's any future patches that are going to update Aztec. So you can see here, I'm just moving my explorer on the right side of the map here, seeing what I can find, anything I can possibly take down with my bandit gunslinger. But pretty much now, it's pretty straightforward, really. All you're going to need to do is just gather your food to get to the 800 food age up, and that's pretty much it. And the next thing we're going to be doing is when we're transitioning, which means getting into the next stage, or in the middle of getting into the next stage, we're going to want to start to mine some gold. And I'm going to show you the sort of split that I go and hopefully it can help you out. So you can see that I'm just making sure to herd. Always make sure to herd. Always have an eye on your next bunch of herdables. For example, my next bunch is probably here in the future. And there also is one just up here as well. So just always keep an eye on that. That's something to bear in mind. That's more of an advanced tip, especially if you're just a beginner. Just try and herd. It's always really helpful because just in case you get raided or anything like that, your hunts are close to your TC so you can garrison your villagers so that they're safe. So we see that I'm aging up now and I'm going for the Elder. Now the Elder is going to be the known as the slow age up and that means that you're going to get two, um, you, sorry, you're going to get one war hut uh, trevoir that's going to come out. So you're going to get a war hut trevoir and that's going to enable you to put out your forward base because 90% of the time, 90-95% of the time, we're going to want to be putting out a forward war hut base. So a forward base is a base that goes out ideally on the opponent's half of the map. So a good spot, for example, would be around here for a forward position. And it means that you can get those troops to the enemy base a lot quicker and it puts the enemy under more pressure. And you can see now the macro split is occurring as I'm aging up. And what you're going to want to do is put five villagers on gold. And you're going to want to sort of split your villagers on wood and food. So you can see here that I've got a couple on food. And ideally what you're going to want to do is build a house in transition. And the reason is you, you are going to use population very quickly. You have a lot of unit cards available. You can see my deck here. A lot of unit cards available, and we're going to be using a lot of those. So we do not want to be popcapped. We want to try and keep on top of it and build as many houses as possible. So that is the plan. So that's all I'm doing right now. You can see a good, nice, healthy split. Everyone's sort of split exactly here. 
And what I would say is I would try and have more people on food than wood. So once you have built that second house, just try and move a few more off of wood onto food. Because what you can do is there is a big button. So there'll be a big button here in your TC. And for 450 food, you can get three Jaguar Prowl Knights. And Jaguar Prowl Knights, as I mentioned in the unique units, they are a heavy infantry unit. They are good at sieging. They are good at taking down cavalry and heavy infantry. So a very powerful unit. And you can sometimes have that to help. It's, it's sometimes a good unit to add to your to your timing attack that we're going to be doing. So we're going to be doing a timing attack around sort of seven, eight minutes. That's kind of when we want to make sure that we've got all of our troops ready to go to go into the enemy base. So I've aged up. And first thing is I'm getting that War Hut Trevar, moving that bad boy out. And you can see here that my first card here is actually the 700 wood. So apologies. I think I said the, uh, the slingers first, but it is the wood first. So it goes 700 wood then the nine slingers and you can see here this is that that's that 450 food card that i said that big button tc card there i was just training it but i just cancelled it there but that's a good card to get 450 food and you get three jaguar prowl knights so my wood has now dropped so i'm gathering up the wood as much as i can and what i'm going to do here because i'm going to be gathering 700 wood i don't really need to have anybody chopping wood right now i can move them all off of wood get them onto food and then when my wood levels start to get quite low i can then start to move them back over to wood so that's kind of like a sort of a basic macro sort of thing that you need to think about is look if i've got a huge wood shipment do i need any people on wood right now no i don't i could be adding way more value if i have them on food and that's what i suggest you guys do so you can see here, if I just move up here, this is where I put my forward base. So a little bit more defensive. I mean, we could have moved it potentially up here, but here is absolutely fine. The only times that I wouldn't put a forward base out is if I'm anticipating a rush sieve or a sieve that will raid a lot. Sometimes a sieve that raid a lot, I might want to go more of a defensive war hut just so I can keep my troops close to my villagers. So you can see here, second card is the nine slingers about to pop. And the Aztec Scouting Party. That's the three Jaguar Prowl Knight big TC button. And you can see that I've made sure to put the garrison from the War Huts. So you can see now that I've got already a nice bunch of troops. And I am going to use them here um, to, to take down these bandit riders and get this treasure here. That's 320 XP. That's an absolutely amazing treasure there. And always use, if there's a treasure lying around, always try and use your military units to help you get some treasures. That'd be really, really useful. And all I'm going to do, once I've built my war hut, is I'm going to continually make coyote runners. That's what I'm going to do. Now, coyote runners are a fantastic unit, really good at raiding. Really, really good. Now, you can see quite a lot's been happening here. So I've been mining my gold. I had five people on gold right at the start. So the minute I started transitioning... From age one to age two, I've had five people on gold. And that is because I want to get this card, the 11 Mayan Allies, a crucial card that costs 500 gold. You can see that I have overmined a little bit. I've got 158 coin there. So I've, I haven't been the best on the macro there, but that's the next card that I'm going to be getting. And when that card comes out, very close to that point is the point of when you're going to think about pushing in a bit. You know, you're going to have 13 spearmen. You're going to have nine slingers. You're going to have coyote runners. You're going to have jaguar prowl knights. You're going to have a lot of units. And at that point is the time to pressurize your enemy. So you can see here, I've got still got a lot of wood backed up. Look at that, 500 wood. So what I suggest you spend it on is just build a couple of houses because you don't want to be pop capped. You're going to be making lots of military units. You're going to be getting a lot of shipments in. You don't want to be pop capped. So spend that on a couple of houses and of course, you're going to be spending it on your coyote runners. So you can see here, I am using some of my coyote runners just to scout the enemy base. I suggest that you do this before you do your sort of timing push. Have a couple of coyote runners, just dip into the enemy base, see what's about, see what they're doing. And you can see here that our opponent, are you playing games after this? Uh, yes, I will be playing uh, one or two games after this. So you can see here that... He's playing very defensively. He's got a tower here. 
which is standard for Spain because he's most likely going to be going for a fast fortress. And I'm just sort of going to duck in here, just see what's going on. There's no need to waste your Coyote Runners. Back them out. Just have a look and see what he's doing. That's all you need to worry about. And now you can see my 13 Mayan uh, or the Mayor Hulk and Spearman have popped now, which is very nice. And I've got nine Coyotes and nine Slingers. And I've got a further eight Slingers on the way. So once these Slingers pop, we're going to be in a good position to move out. What I'm going to do just before then, I was just sieging down that TP. It's always good if you can do some sieging. These guys have pretty good siege, 24 siege. They have 36 siege. It's not too bad. You can see here, I'm just once again scouting, trying to idle the opponent. That's what you want to do. That's what this, this build is about. Now, this is maybe not more for the beginner, but also for people who want to play Aztec. With this kind of opening and this kind of aggression, you want to force your opponent to keep idling. You want to constrict your opponent and essentially take over 80% of the map for yourself. So you've got all the hunts to yourself, you've got all the resources to yourself, and you want to make sure that he stays within his base and he feels really pressured. That's what you want to do. That's one of the main aims of this build and you can see here I'm getting a little bit stuck in I am now starting to move my um, units forward I'm continuing continually making codes and this was really unfortunate from the opponent here went into age three got the TC and unfortunately he is going to lose that TC which is going to be absolutely huge not ideal and that TC is going to go down and look at the sheer number of units. 35 units we have here. And we have another 5 Coyotes. And we actually have another 10. So we've got 50 units in the space of just under 9 minutes. We've got 50 units all ready to get stuck in. Which is absolutely awesome. So the outpost is going to go down straight away. And now I'm in a good position to take down the TC. And there's nothing much he can do now. You know, he... That he's taken a very greedy fast fortress here. You can see that he's starting to try and build a barracks. If we have a look at what stuff he's got, he really hasn't got much. He's got 1,100 food, and that's pretty much it. He is, however, getting the town militia card. And he's trying to get some villagers out here. So this is the only thing you've got to be afraid of. Now, what can happen when you're doing this, when you're sieging the TC, what can happen is, like we I'm going to show you in a minute, is there will be the town militia pop. So there will be a town militia that will pop out of the TC and they are quite scary. They're very, very tough units. And what I would suggest that you do nine times out of 10, you just back off, back off, get away from the TC because their health is slowly deteriorating over time. Back off, wait about 20, 30 seconds, come back in and then deal with them because they'll be a hell of a lot weaker. Do not stay and fight them. Nine times out of ten, don't do that. Because I'm in such a good position here and I've got so many units, I am feeling pretty confident and I do decide to stay when the militia pop. But trust me, if you're just learning this, I wouldn't do it. But look how many coyote runners have. We have 15 coyote runners absolutely just tanking, taking through, uh, chopping through those dogs there. And there it is. There's the militia pop with the vills. So this is the final battle now. This is what Berlatex can do. This is all he can do right now. And the, uh, the uh, spearmen here are doing a great job at tanking as well. They've got quite a high HP, 185 HP. And you can see there, that is it, GG. So there you go, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that casting there of an opening that I would suggest that you guys do for the Aztecs to start to learn them. Play in age two, be as aggressive as you can, try and shut them down. And if you go to age three, then try and maybe see if you can get Eagle Runner Knights out. They're a very good unit. And just see how you go. Just see how you go. Right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to drop a like. Let me know in the comments below how you're getting on playing Aztec. If you're having any sort of difficulties trying to understand them, please let me know down below. And of course, you can catch me streaming on Twitch at Widgie1. Catch you guys later.